This video is for section 8.5, day one. We're going to learn how to factor quadratic functions in the form x squared plus bx plus c. They're also called trinomials. So let's begin. This method that I'm about to show you is really cool and I'm excited to show it to you because I did not have this when I was learning it in high school. So it's the easiest way that I know how to show this and go through a problem. First of all, factoring polynomials. This must be true in order to use this method. First thing, the degree must be two. It's called a quadratic. The number of terms must be three. It's called a trinomial. We talked about what those words mean in section 8.1, the very first section of this chapter. Last thing that must be true, the coefficient of the squared term is one a.k.a. the 1 in, is the number in front of the x squared. So example like this. Or if you don't see a number at all, it's just this. So you can use this method when all of these factors are satisfied. Okay, x squared plus bx plus c. What you want to do is always take the number at the end and put it up top. This is going to be called the x method. Take the number, whatever's in that c spot, and put it up top. Take the number that's in the b spot and put it on bottom. Basically what you want to do is figure out what numbers can you multiply to get the number up top, but add to get the number on bottom. And I'll explain that again in just a moment. Here are your steps to factoring success. Step one, draw in your parentheses and fill in the variable as shown right here. Number two, in your x puzzle, place the b in your addition spot and the c in your multiplication spot. Step three, what will the signs be of these numbers in the blank spaces? That's what we're trying to figure out. Will they both be positive? Will they both be negative? Or will there be a positive and a negative? Step four, solve the X puzzle and place your answer in the parentheses. So whatever numbers you get for these blank spaces right here, you're going to take those numbers and put them in the blank spaces in the parentheses. And the last step, check your work by distributing or using the FOIL method. Feel free to pause here if you need to catch up on the steps to factoring success. If you're ready to go, let's try the first example. I'm going to show you how this X method works. Factor R squared plus 4R plus 3. First thing is, always draw your X and take the 3 put it up top, take the 4, put it on bottom. So we're going to have a 3 here and a 4 here. What we want to do is figure out which numbers do we multiply, make sure you write this word here, multiply to get 3, but add to get 4. Fortunately, 3 is a very small number, so the only factors of 3 are 3 in itself. And conveniently, 3 times 1 is 3 and 3 plus 1 is 4 so those numbers work. Now we're going to be writing our parentheses there's always two of them take the variable r and put it in the first spot of both and now take the 3 take the 1 and because they're both positive put pluses in front and that's it we're at our answer. This is the factored form of the given quadratic function. Now I'd like to show you the checking method. You do not have to check every time, but I do want you to know how to do this, just in case you get stuck. So please write this down in the blank space on your notes. The checking method is basically using FOIL, or you can use the table method. It's really your choice. I'll use the FOIL method this time. So take the R's and multiply them and you get R squared. Take the R and the 3 and you get 3R. Take the 1 and the r and you get 1r, and take the 1 and the 3 and you get 3. Remember, we're multiplying. If you totally are blanking on this part, go back to section 8.3 and watch that video again or look at your notes. Okay, 
The numbers in the middle are like terms, as always, as long as you follow the order correctly. So we're going to get 4R when we combine the like terms, and the outside two terms always come down. And take a look. This polynomial is the exact same thing that we started with. Therefore, our factored form that I boxed up top is the correct answer. They must match to be correct, and they actually do, so we're all good. All right, let's look at our first formal example. And I'm going to be using a box on the side to help us organize things. So let's do the X method. The 15 goes up top and the 8 goes on bottom. What we're trying to do is figure out what numbers do we multiply to get 15 but add to get 8. So now in the box at right, what are the factors of 15? 1 and 15 multiply get 15 as well as 3 and 5. Now let's add them. 1 plus 15 is 16 and 3 plus 5 is 8. And it looks like 3 and 5 are the winners because when you multiply them you get 15 and when you add them you get 8. Now let's take those two numbers and rewrite the x's in beginning and take the 3 and take the 5 and put them in the parentheses and that is the factored form. To check this we're going to multiply so we get x squared and we get plus 5x plus 3x plus 15 and it turns out we get the original, which is awesome. That means we are correct. Okay, now we have a new polynomial. This time we have a 24 up top and we have a negative 11 on bottom. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out two numbers to multiply to get 24 and to add to get negative 11. So hopefully right now you're realizing, okay, both of these numbers cannot be positive because you have to add to get a negative number. So let's write down the factors of 24 in the box at right. And also, let's talk about the signs. The signs of these numbers must both be negative because when you multiply them, you're getting a positive number. So a negative number times a negative number gives you a positive, right? But when you add a negative and a negative, you get a negative. That's exactly what we want. So let's write down the negative factors of 24. I always start with 1 in itself. So negative 1 plus negative 24 is negative 25. That's not what we want. Now let's do negative 2 and negative 12. Negative 2 plus negative 12 equals negative 14. That's not what we want. We want to get negative 11. Let's try negative 3 and negative 8 as well as negative 4 and negative 6. When you add these guys, you get negative 11 and you get negative 10. We obviously want the pair that adds up to negative 11, so that turns out that the negative 3 and the negative 8 work. Take those two numbers and put them in the parentheses. So we get x minus 3, x minus 8, and that's our factored form. If we wanted to check, we could use the FOIL method or the table method, and we will find out that it works. Okay, here's the last example for today. And it's the same process, just different numbers. 
So first thing I always like to do is draw the X, take the last term and always put it up top, and take the middle term and always put it on bottom. So we're going to have to multiply to get negative 15, but add to get 2. Now let's talk about the signs of these numbers. In order to multiply to get a negative, we must have a positive and a negative in order to get a negative. So that means that our numbers that we're looking for, there will be a positive, there will be a negative. So let's talk about the factors of negative 15. We have 1 and negative 15, or negative 1 and positive 15. I'm just moving the negative as well as 3 and negative 5 and negative 3 and positive 5. Those all multiply to get negative 15. Now let's just add them and see which one works. We need to get positive 2 right here. 1 plus a negative 15 gives us a negative 14. Negative 1 plus 15 gives us a positive 14. 3 plus a negative 5 gives us a negative 2, and negative 3 plus 5 gives us a positive 2. And that's what we want. We want a positive 2. So our factors are going to be negative 3 and 5. Awesome. Take those numbers and put them in parentheses. X always goes first. Take the negative 3, bring it down, and take the positive 5, bring it down. And there we go. We have the factored form. It is x minus 3 quantity times the quantity x plus 5. Feel free to go through this lesson again if you got lost or if you need to just slow down a bit. And you can try the lesson check if you feel comfortable. If not, please make sure you have uh, had all the other lesson checks done. And we will practice this material together tomorrow.